Day 116. In the Kharkiv region, heavy clashes continue. Today, the Russians conducted a series of airstrikes. The first targets of the airstrike became the villages in the northwestern part of the region, Timofeevka and Tsapevka. As you can see, these two are located very close to the administrative border. Small clashes along the border have been happening since the front line moved back, so this airstrike was highly likely conducted in response to the increasing number of troops or military machinery in the region. The second target of the attack became the northern suburbs of Kharkiv and the city of Kharkiv itself. Here the Russians attempted to destroy the Ukrainian warehouses with ammunition, but I have no information on how successful for them these attacks were. In the northeastern part of the region, heavy clashes to the north of Stary Saltyp continue. The Russians are also mining the area to the northeast of Tsirkuni, which is weird because they were advancing in this direction, although this could have been done in order to protect themselves from a flank attack. It would not be the first time when the Russians are utilizing this tactic, so we will see how it goes. In the northeast, the Russians are preparing for a new, bigger wave of attacks. Today they continue to shell the whole Izum bridgehead. They shelled again Vernopilia, where the Ukrainians recently conducted a counterattack. They shelled Dibrivna and Krulka to the south of Izum, and they also shelled the towns and villages around Slovensk. The Russians are reportedly achieving some progress in Dolina, therefore the Russians will for sure ramp up the intensity of their attacks here, because they always concentrate on the areas where they are able to gain ground. This is bad news for the Ukrainians, as there are no big settlements nearby to create fortified positions and not let the enemy gain a lot of ground. The next more or less big village here is Hrastishne. The small lakes here also do not constitute a huge impediment, because there are a lot of places where you can get across by land, you don't even need bridges or passages. This means encirclement of the Ukrainians in Dibrivka and Krulka. The Russians are already controlling this small forest in between, because this is where they are launching their attacks. So unless the Ukrainians reinforce this region and give a huge fight in the forest, the defense line will collapse basically till Slovensk. On the other hand, there is not much sense in wasting too much resources on defending open spaces. The Ukrainians have been preparing defense line Barvinkove Slovensk for months. There are a lot of quite big settlements along the road with the river in front of this defense line. This will be an enormous challenge for the Russians. They can only attack it in front, while the Ukrainians have a lot of possibilities to supply themselves in the back, as there are a lot of highways leading to each of the settlements on this defense line. The Russians understand this, and that is why they have been agglomerating a lot of forces in the Izum that have not been fully engaged yet. In the east, the Russians made a series of attacks. Their first target became the village of Toshkivka. This is the sixth week of the Russians trying to take this village. The general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine reported that this attack was once again successfully repelled. The Russians have also resumed their attacks on Vrubivka and Mykolaivka. As you remember, there was some conflicting information about the success of the Russian forces around Vrubivka. The fact that the Russians continue pushing in this direction and even made an attack on Mykolaivka from Vrubivka indicates that the Russians indeed achieved success here and are determined to continue pushing. As you can see, they are really trying hard to close the circle around Hirske and Zolote. In order to not allow the Ukrainians to move a lot of forces out of the pocket to reinforce other directions, the Russians made a series of attacks on Zolote. They attacked Zolote from the east and from the south. The general staff reported that these attacks were repelled. However, that does not really matter, as these attacks still help the Russians to achieve their objective of making someone stay there to repel these attacks. Overall, the Hirske Zolote pocket is what the Russians seem to have prioritized for the following week, so we can expect the intensity of the battles here only to increase. In Severodonetsk, the Ukrainian forces are planning to make an attack from Lysychansk in order to help the Ukrainians that are stuck in the operational encirclement in the industrial zone. The Russians are anticipating this attack and, as the general staff reported, are surveilling the area with drones 24 hours per day. The situation here is very tense, although from the good news, they still have plenty of options. In the south, the Ukrainians made a counter-attack. Recently, the fights were reported to take place in Yehorivka and Pavlivka. As you remember, the town of Vuhledar has been stormed by the Russians several times. After a series of unsuccessful attempts, the Russians decided to focus on other directions and started to move their forces towards Hulaipole and Orihiv. The Ukrainians in Vuhledar took advantage of that 
and attacked or even fully took back for some time Pavlovka and Yehorivka. The Russians were forced to quickly react and they did take these villages back, however, the Ukrainians were not planning on holding these positions, because they are cut off from their strongholds by the local river. This attack was done in order to prevent the Russians from gathering too many troops in the Zaporizhia direction, necessary for an attack in that direction. If you want to support the work that I am doing, you can either support me on Patreon or make a purchase in my online store. Find all the links in the description below. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next report.